the hardest thing for us is we opened a, a world-class uh, 30,000 seat stadium and got uh, got a really good year in, won a heap of awards, and then uh, and then closed the doors. So it's um, yeah, it'll be nice. It'll be nice to get back home. This is the Deep in the Weeds podcast. I'm Anthony Huckstep. The business of feeding people reaches far beyond a restaurant or cafe. With restrictions in place, how many hospitality workers were employed at stadiums where tens of thousands of people are fed over a short period? But in a pandemic, there's also the need to feed people returning home that are placed in quarantine. And of course, our frontline workers, such as the medical, military and police force. Martin Dolke leads the kitchen team at Australia's brand new 30,000 seat venue, Bankwest Stadium in Sydney's western suburbs. Martin, how are you going? Good afternoon, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for joining us. Um, With the closure of um, all of the stadiums because of social restrictions and, um, you know, and events like, and games like the NRL, um, what was the immediate impact on what you do day to day? Yeah, it was pretty huge, Hux. It was pretty huge. I mean, you can imagine we um, we came sort of straight out of doing uh, a Queen concert at uh, ANZ Stadium and then Firefight concert, so two sellout crowds within a weekend, to pretty much starting to wind down not so long after that. So the um, the games, I think we only got in one game at Bankwest Stadium at the beginning of the season with no crowd. Um, so and then the, the um, you know the pin was pulled on the whole deal, so there was uh, there was nothing. So it hit pretty hard. Um, about three thousand casuals were basically stood down from our operations, um, and that's across other our other venues as well, which is you know Eastern Eastern Creek Raceway and uh, the whole of the State Sports Centre and uh, all you know Cogra Footy Ground and those sorts of places as well. What's it like working and cooking in an empty stadium? It's it's been pretty eerie, I must I must say. Um, you know, for the first couple of weeks when we sort of um, didn't have too much to do, we went into stock control. So um, clearly, having all these big stadiums across uh, across New South Wales and, and our big stadium at, at Optus Stadium in Perth, um, we obviously need to know what what our bottom line is, I suppose, and work out exactly sort of what we're carrying and and use by date. So for the first time, I think in my career. Um, which is a few, a few too many years that I, a few more than I care to mention, but um, it's probably the first time I've actually done a stock take uh, by by date, by use by date, um, and so uh, we jumped on, um, you know, all, all hands on 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 deck, and everybody from the corporate side to uh, to the kitchen team of seven of us uh, jumped in and started doing stock takes across all of our stadiums and all our operations to work out exactly where we were at. You know, things like, you know, soft drinks and packets of chips and, and all that sort of stuff that retail sell that we don't normally have a lot to do with. Uh, we're sort of having to work through that to work out exactly what our bottom line was. Can you give us a scale of, you know, how many people are employed to feed that many people at these sort of events? I know there's multiple stadiums, but perhaps we could pick one and just at a big event, what does it take to feed people? Yeah, so well, let's let's pick the you know the biggest one we've just sort of the biggest weekend we just did did which was the back to back Queen concert at ANZ and then followed by Firefight. Uh, you're probably looking at um, in the kitchen brigade for that for those days. You're probably looking at about 150 to 200 kitchen teams. So everybody from chefs to stewards to kitchen hands to to everybody that's associated. Um, that then that doesn't include you know the security and the customer service and the retail. People um, and those sorts of things. I mean, my, um, the team I'm associated with, we um, we purely do uh, corporate, and um, we look after the corporate side of things. So, on a corporate event like that, we're probably feeding anywhere between five and ten thousand. Wow. Yeah, it's big. <laughs> <laughs> Has food changed a lot in stadiums? You know, like out at Bankwest Stadium, you know, I think it's not the typical stadium food that people, you know, normally think about. You know, just hot dogs and chips and pies. Can you tell us about what you do there? Yeah, that's, we've reinvented the wheel, really. I mean, we just, um, uh, you know, there's there had to be change. I mean, we've got a brand new spanking uh, stadium that's just won, I think it's the ninth award, um, and we, we really had to bring something different to the public. And um, you know, everything from our from our 
from our burgers through to, you know, sort of everything that we do. You know, the chips aren't standard anymore. Um, you know, we use a, uh, you know, an Olsen sea salt, uh, s smoked sea salt on our chips and things like that and rosemary, you know, rosemary and stuff like that. So we really have changed it. Um, you know, when people go to an event like that, we really want to make sure that they can eat well. Um, because otherwise you find people will just go out outside the stadium, have dinner somewhere or have go to the pub or something. But we really want to sort of attract those people to, to come in and enjoy the whole the whole, uh, the whole experience. What's the response been to that? I know right now obviously we're in a pandemic and the stadium isn't open for food. But when you rolled that out initially, what was the response from the public? Yeah, really good. I mean, really good. We spent a lot of time just on the way our food looked as well, the presentation. Um and just, uh, you know, the, even the packaging through our corporate retail. We have some corporate retail sections at Bankwest. So even the packaging that we were using, um, we are super uh, sustainable at Bankwest Stadium. We're, we're super environmentally friendly. So we're not, we, use, we use no plastics. So it's, um, you know, the, the containers, the funny thing now, the containers that everybody's using for all their little restaurant cafe takeaways are the containers we've been using since, for a year now since we opened Bankwest. So, which is there's now a massive shortage in Sydney of, of those sort of that sort of package. Yeah, <laughs> funny enough. So you you work with some pretty amazing producers at the stadium. You know, have you seen any impact on on those guys since you know you can't use them anymore in in many ways or the ways that you were using? Yeah, Hux, what you really have we we um it's 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 one of those things. You know, you can imagine sort of the volume we're purchasing everything from, you know, pallets of chips through to you know the fruit and veg and and things like that. I mean, um, it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty horrendous to sit back and think, oh, we're not buying. You know, the, you know, we're normally getting you know ten trucks a day uh, when we've got a big uh, a big cook coming up for a, you know leading into an event and and to to know that you know and I'm I'm sort of check I've reached out to a few of those people and had a chat to them to see how they are and stuff like that. But it's kind of um, it's it's kind of really disheartening to think which you know these suppliers. Uh, that we were talking to every day, we're no longer, we're no longer, you know, dealing with at all, you know. So it's pretty, um, pretty, pretty chaotic, I suppose. And I mean, on the only good side of that is, and we'll no doubt touch on it in a minute, is quarantine cuisine. But um, we managed to reach out and, and get some of our suppliers on board and help them out, which we can go into a bit more a bit later. Well, let's let's jump into that now because you know you've got empty stadiums and we don't really know when society is going to be allowed to have be part of big events again um but you've you've been doing a lot of initiatives since the pandemic can you tell us you know what role you've been playing in feeding people yeah we um once the uh, quarantine started and people were flying back into sydney and had to be quarantined they started using 13 hotels in the city um, for people that would have to they check in and stay for two weeks, and once once they're given a medical clearance, they're allowed back into society. Um, we were we were contacted uh, by by the government. Um, obviously, the stadiums are owned by the government, so we, we work very closely with them. Um, and we 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 were contacted by the government to to jump in and help. Some of the hotels in the city were just getting absolutely slammed. Um, probably you know probably your, your worst chef nightmare of being sl you know just abs abs. Abs absolutely, you know, <laughs> slaughtered, you know, be like the docket printer printing, printing continually for four hours, you know. So um, we had about uh, 72 hours to, to do a proposal wow. uh, and put, put in a tender. Uh, we, you know, the team, we sort of, sort of sat down and came up with, you know, menus and, and, and things that would cover a lot of dietaries and, and bits and pieces. And then we stepped in and took over. Uh, the Travelodge Wynyard and the Travelodge Sydney um, and feeding, uh, you know, to combine those hotels can house, you know, about 1,100 people. Um, and I think to date, I think the numbers that we've, I've heard this week, we've just, we've just hit our, I think, 65,000th meal wow. uh, in, about, in about six or seven weeks. So, yeah, it's a huge undertaking. Um, obviously, we're used to doing volume and that's, uh, and that's something we're good at um, and we're used to, being very um, very precise on our on our HACCP and our food safety and things like that. So again, that's you know this this was perfect for us. So we had the we had the facilities ANZ Stadium, you know, multi million dollar kitchen, and, and we had the facilities at, at sitting there doing nothing. So it was an actually perfect opportunity with our 
uh, with our distribution network that we have already in the base at the stadium because we feed all our smaller stadiums and our, our other venues. Um, so we were pretty much we, we were geared up, ready to go, and we actually got it up and running in three days. When people are in quarantine for 14 days, what's the responsibility in regards to what you need to provide for their diet and how do you construct a menu that way? Look, it's pretty hard. I mean, you don't know. Um, sort of, we've just kicked off round three. I'm uh, I'm at the Travel Lodge uh, in Sydney, it went in Wentworth Street at the moment, and uh, we've just kicked off our third round. Uh, so people just checked in uh, on started checking in on Tuesday, um, and it's slowly, slowly. On Tuesday, we received twelve. We're now up to um, I think we're doing dinner tonight for about three hundred and twenty. Um, the dietary thing is is the biggest thing. So you've got to uh, imagine people. These people are coming from all over the world, all, all different religions and and so forth. So the dietary uh, the dietary side of it's pretty big. We've got a dietary team at ANZ Stadium that do the do the initial um, process and then send it to me at the uh, at the hotel and then I break it down and and make sure that everybody here, you know, everybody from a, a pregnant woman to to you know, somebody who's allergic to onion and garlic, you know. So um, I think this this round starting, we're not too bad. This round, the last round, I think out of five hundred and twenty people, I think we had one hundred and twenty six dietary requirements. Wow! So it's a it's a fairly large, fairly large under you know uh, undertaking for a, for a three week um, for a three week period. You know, because by the time they start checking in. Um, by the time they start checking in, uh, they, um, you know, they, they dribble in. So every day, like we've had more people check in today, so that adds 14 days to our, to our contract. So um, the contract ends once the hotel is full and we get to the end of the 14 days. So it's pretty, pretty crazy. What sort of uh, team does it take to feed that many people? I know you're used to doing large events and, um, you know, have you lost staff in this process because of the pandemic or, or have you been able to bring many of them back to do this? Yeah, we're really lucky. I think we've bought, um, we've bought, um, I mean, obviously our full-time team is, was, was still entrenched and we still had a lot to do. And, and the same with our front of house uh, teams from our, from our various venues. I mean, I'm looking, I'm sitting in the restaurant, uh, which we've now turned into a, a distribution centre at the uh, Travel Lodge at, uh, in Sydney. And um, I'm looking now and I've got people staff from all over uh, our state sports centre and places like that and they're getting ready, they're setting up and setting up each floor, it's dietary requirements and so forth and I go through and I check on those sorts of dietary requirements, check every box, every box is labelled and we make sure that, you know, Joe Joe on uh, floor 19 is getting his correct meal but um, we were really lucky enough to start bringing back, I suppose with the help of JobKeeper as well, start to bring back some of our casual brigade. There's probably... Um, probably about 15 to 20 at ANZ Stadium today. Um, that's the same every day now while we're working through this and then it's trucked over to the hotel and then we break it down once it gets here and then we start, uh, you know, the, the only hot meal of the day is, um, is the dinner that's prepared at night. So I've got a team of chefs here which are casual chefs, which so we've been able to bring those guys back in. I've got three chefs with me here tonight, so we'll produce... Uh, a hot meal, um, and it's and it's not your normal uh, hot meal either. So it's still uh, we're still doing our sort of corporate corporate type um, meals, the same as what we would do in our stadium. So our menus sort of rolled out straight into into this uh, situation. With uh, the fact that we don't really know when we can attend large events again, and um, you know the big impact it's had on our society, you know, can you tell us sort of what you've gone through personally? in this experience of when the pandemic first happened and, and how you feel about your career and the industry that you're in? Yeah, good, good question. Look, it's, you know, it's one of those, it's one of those situations. And I actually had this conversation today with somebody, one, actually one of the, I've got a new 57 new policeman friends because we feed them every day. Um, and I was saying to one of them today, when I became a chef, I never expected my career as a chef to be, to be challenged. I always thought there would always, always be work for a chef. And it wouldn't matter where I was in the world, um, I would pick up work as a chef or a cook or, or whatever. I suppose I'm one of the lucky ones that, that was in a, in a, based in a company that um, was very, 
you know, very entrenched in looking after their staff. So, so I, it, there was no real time that I sort of was too worried about um, my my job. But, but there was always the unknown. There was the unknown of, gee, are we going to be stood down? Or you know, are we going to be closed completely? Um, you know, once we once we started, uh, you know, we've done the, the massive clean up and we've done uh, preparation of our systems and gone through our recipes and menus and things. And you know, there's a fair bit of work you can always do on that. But um, yeah, just a lot of my friends and a lot of my um, a lot of my mates who are chefs who who are who have have been stood down. It you know sort of reaching out to those guys to make sure they're okay. I mean, I did get a lot of phone calls from people saying, "Hey, do you know of any work going?" It's it's just it's just unprecedented times. And I, I, I would imagine, I, well, I hope we never see this sort of stuff again in my career or my lifetime. But, um, yeah, just really, um, I, th- I think just waking up and thinking, oh, my God, you know, people, the, the, and seeing cafes and restaurants closed and hearing them, of them closing permanently, you know, because of this, it's just horrendous. Like it's in an in a industry I love and, and seeing it sort of, Deep in the weeds, if you like, um, it's it's one of those. It's it's a, it's something I never expected. Something I never in a million years expected. I always thought, you know, if I wasn't, you know, I had my own restaurant for ten years. I'm glad. I'm so glad I don't own my own restaurant. Um, I'm so glad I, I work for a, a big company. Uh, it's incredible. You touched on briefly just just before about uh, a connection that you have with police, and I know you've been feeding the police force and the military and medical professionals as well. Can you tell us a bit about that? And have you had any insight to the experience that they've been having during this pandemic? Yeah, pretty crazy. Like, um, you know, just this, this, the stories. Um, and uh, currently, like, to, at, at the moment, we have 57 police on a rotating roster here. We have uh, up to 10 nurses and doctors here. And uh, at the moment, we, we, we have Navy in today, and they're changing over to Air Force tomorrow, and there's 16 of them. Um, they guard every exit here. So you, if you could imagine sitting on a stool outside a door for eight hours and staring into a street, um, it's not comfortable. And, and uh, I think uh, it, it's it's probably a pretty it's probably a pretty hard gig. I mean, a lot of these a lot of these police. Um, actually, I bumped into a policeman yesterday who I haven't seen for seven years. I used to play footy with. He's a detective. He's been. Ta- he normally doesn't wear a uniform, so he's now dressed in a uniform and sitting on a stool uh, in a in a at a fire exit outside in in Goulburn Street uh, in the cold um, for eight hours a day for six weeks. So he's contract. He's con- they're contracted for six weeks. Those guys. So it's a rotating roster, obviously. So they do their normal sort of twelve-hour days or eight-hour days, and uh, we have a command center at the other end of the restaurant. So I get to meet meet a few of the inspectors and so forth. And it's um, it's a tough gig for these people. It's it's not you know even though they're being fed really really, really well and they're loving it and they're all complaining they're going they're going home fat, but um, it is a tough gig. It is a really tough gig for them. And, and same with the medical staff. Like it's. Um, it's just so unknown. It's so unknown when a bus arrives and the whole, the whole building becomes, uh, you know, like a, a quarantine station as, as people are checking in and going into, going into their into their rooms. It's um, it, it, they're doing an amazing job. I, I can tell you, I I have a whole new uh, respect for for the military, medical, and and police. I mean, obviously, they've never had to do anything like this in their careers. And let's hope they don't have to do it again. But it's 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 really it's an absolute eye opener because it's um, the amount of paperwork and the amount of organisation. Um, I think today I think there's ten hotels in the city here in Sydney that are all full and uh, all have the same amount of uh, military, medical, and uh, and police uh, support. Now you're feeding all these people coming back into the country and all of these people in the front line. Um, but I I heard something along the grapevine that. Um, your food's pretty highly rated amongst them. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, look, it's pretty funny. Like a few of the, a few of the, uh, a few of the police are uh, there's some f- a heap of characters, and uh, there's a few of the young sergeants that we've had through. And um, the other night, we've my um, my sort of office that I've built inside the the restaurant has a glass window looks out to Albert Lane and, and uh, there's a police car parked out the back all day long and there's two police sitting in it and when it's a nice day they sort of stand outside and when we first started 
a couple of the young young guys came up and got their food, and they took it downstairs. And it was it was like being in a restaurant and watching the the the, um, the food influencers taking photos of their food. These two boys <laughs> opened <laughs> opened up their uh, dinner boxes and put it put them on the on the bonnet of the police car and shot were shooting photos of it. And uh, they were and they were, and I saw them later. And I said, "What were you boys doing?" And they said. Oh, just sharing with the rest of the team how good our food is here. So there is a rating system. Uh, we've, uh, <laughs> we're, sitting, we're, <laughs> we're sitting at the top of the tree at the moment. I think it may have something to do with the Maxi Bon ice creams they got for dessert last night. Um, but, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, but it's, it's, it's actually really good. And, and they're so, um, you know, we don't, we do have, we do get a lot of feedback. There's a lot of feedback um, coming back through to the, to the, to our company, to this, to Venues Live. Um, through the guests staying in the hotel, we give them the opportunity to send us emails. Um, we get tagged in a lot of uh, stuff on social media, and uh, um, it was really funny. We, we when we got in here, this hotel had been catering for three days prior to us arriving, and um, a, there was a girl who was in in her room, and she'd started an Instagram page called Julia's Quarantine Meals or something or other, and um, she posted. And opened up, and I sat it on her windowsill, and posted a photo of her her new lunch, her lunch that we'd provided on our first day, and she just said, "Oh my God, the caterers have changed," <laughs> and it was uh, it was it was like a, a massive win because we, you know, I mean, seriously, we threw this thing together in three three or four days, and then to to get that sort of feedback straight away. But um, the services, the police, the military, everybody are so thankful for their dinner. And last, I mean, last night was spaghetti bolognese and. And bread and salad and and you know maxi pot ice creams and you know drinks and so forth and to have them to have them to come and thank you personally like it's you know it's kind of it's kind of really nice they're doing a great job but uh, you know it's a really good opportunity because the the, mil- the services are getting the same food that we're feeding the guests so we do hear a lot of the time from the military and the police you know they say there's no way anyone could ever complain about these meals so which is really good feedback it's good feedback for us and we pass that straight back to the team back at, uh, at the stadiums as well. To make sure that uh, you know it's a big team effort, so it's fantastic. What has this operation taught you that you might use in the future at stadiums? Uh, we actually <laughs> we've actually had a little bit of a joke about this week. Uh, we have a beautiful, beautiful award-winning stadium, and it's sort of been you know putting mothballs for a little cotton wool and stuff for a little while. Um, it's our ch- our change of, of the way we're feeding people at the stadium. Obviously, with restaurants and things reopening. Sort of from the first of June, people have got to take make some changes on how they how they address the situation. So, um, I, I know I know I've been reading through the briefs for looking after the two teams on Friday nights, which is the the rabbits and the roosters, and um, you know the way the meals will be served to them. Normally, a lot of and the outside broadcast guys too, so the people responsible for getting the, the game on TV. Uh, so there's 50 of those in on Friday night. So they will be handed a, a meal pack rather than a buffet. So normally those guys are fed uh, on a buffet. So um, those the days of a buffet have gone for us in in the stadium. So the corporate the corporate market, which is normally fed a you know beautiful buffet on beautiful equipment and beautiful china and stuff, is is going to change for a little while until we get completely to the other side of this. So. Just the way we package, the way we present, um, you know, we're even on our little dinner boxes, and I'll put this up on my, I'll post this photo up on my socials this week, but we put a little bit of red and white um, greaseproof paper in the bottom of our cardboard box just to make it look picnicky and make it look a little bit better. And, you know, we're, we're doing that, um, you know, we're doing that 1,500 times a day, you know, so... Somebody back at our stadium is packing little cardboard boxes with little pieces of red and white paper in them. So, but it's it means that somebody's got a job and somebody's doing some work. So it's you know it's it's fantastic. But it, it, yeah, look, hygiene's always been really big on our agenda anyway. And I mean, imagine you know we we're looking after you know eighty thousand plus people at the big stadium and thirty thousand at the little stadium. Hygiene's really important, no matter what we do. So this is just sort of. It's just reiterated with us that um, the things we do are good practice, and uh, and hopefully you know there's some 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 in the industry that probably needed to look at that a little bit better. That'll probably teach them some lessons as well. So, um, but yeah, we we'll look the way we've gone about it is sort of how we used to we go about it normally anyway. But you know, all we've really done this time is added a face mask, and I know in the big kitchen at uh, ANZ that everybody's. 
you know, in, in, you know, all the protective gear and face masks and lots of gloves and, you know, the glove, I'd love to have shares in a glove company or a mask company. Um, but, um, yeah, 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 or in a cardboard box company for that matter. But, um, yeah, but it's, uh, it, it has, it has taught us, it has taught us, you know, things we've learned through what we're doing at the hotels. Um, it's kind of what we do in our corporate retail market anyway, the way we present. But um, now we're going to do that with presenting to our corporates when corporates are allowed back in. Uh, once the government, uh, you know, we'll follow the, the government guidelines on that when we can get crowds back in. Um, well, you know, for a while, the people will be fed the same way in a corporate environment. So, um, you know, disposable cutlery and, and you know, we're now looking hard at, at, at what's, how you can present something really well in a, in a cardboard box with a lid, <laughs> so, which is interesting. But, um, but yeah, no, it's a bit of, it's, it's, there's a light, a lighter side to it too because we've sort of thought, well, you know, when we got the sort of brief from the NRL about how we, we need to look after their referees and players and so forth and we sort of just, everyone just looked at each other and go, can we just give them a, a dinner box like we do at the hotel? So it's the same sort of principle. So it's really good. So you've painted a kind of a bizarre picture of, you know, stadiums with no crowd, um, but you're still feeding the people that are attending because they're putting the matches back on. But what's it like on game day with a full house? Oh, look, it's um, – I still get really excited. It's one of the things as a chef, um, you know, on the, on the corporate side of things, we still do everything from cocktail parties to buffets to beautiful plated meals and, you know, some of our – um, uh, some of our events, you know, there's a, a room at um, the director's the director's lounge at uh, Bankwest Stadium is a beautifully fitted out, um, uh, beautifully fitted out restaurant. I mean, it 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 is a multi million dollar looking restaurant. It's got a massive open kitchen, and I mean, it's still really really exciting. Obviously, on game day, I I'm sort of not on the tools. I I do walk around and uh, and and you know check on all the things that are happening and making sure that all our corporates are being well looked after and you know again dietaries and things like that but um i still get really excited i still get really excited when we're you know called back to to a and z for you know sort of eighty thousand people for firefight you know i still get really excited on the day about going to work and just the buzz and the crowd and you know it's an absolute rush so um i don't I don't uh, miss the, the sound of the docket printer, but because we already know what we're feeding people and it's already, it's already pre-planned. But um, oh, I still enjoy the prep days. You know, we prep for two or three days prior to a really big event, um, and I still love that. Still love that sort of side of things, and 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 I suppose nurturing the young. You know, we have so many young chefs that we uh, that we use in our brigades, and it's fantastic being able to sort of pass on knowledge to them. And and be, as you touched on before, our food is different. Um, and I, I do a lot of hashtagging, you know, hashtag stadium food done differently because it is different. We, the way we present um, some of the food to the corporates at Bankwest is completely different to how it's ever been done. And it's, it's, it's a great challenge for us to, be, to keep reinventing and, and making sure that we are, you know, as good as or if not better than any, any good restaurant in Sydney. Do you think this experience that we've had will change the landscape for events um, and big, large public gatherings in the future. Yeah, I really do. I think um, I think just people in general. I think people will be far more um, vigilant about their their um, their personal hygiene, um, which is is not a bad thing. Um, but I think um, you know, I know personally, I will only I will use my mobile phone with the built-in credit card in it forever. Now, like I will never touch a an ATM or touch an FPOS machine or things like that. So. Um, I mean, even just the daily, even being in, in the hotel here and going down to the loading dock when our trucks arrive to, you know, make sure we're getting the right stuff off the truck, you know, touching a button in an elevator has, has a whole new meaning to it, you know. Um, and the same at the same at work. I mean, we, we sanitise and wash our hands, you know, 10 times a day anyway, but, you know, now it's sort of, it's, it's just another element to that. So um, it, will be, it's, it will be completely different. And I think big events... Big events. I think it'll be a long time till we see another really big event in Sydney, um, which, 
you know, crowd-wise. I mean, I know at, um, at Bank West we have Green Day booked, I think, for October or November. I mean, I, I'm a bit of a Green Day fan, so I'm hoping that you know, October, November is, is still still on the calendar. But, um, yeah, so it, it's going to be a long time, I think, before it normal any sort of normality is back, and I think normality will change. I think normality will be... Um, Everyone will be far more vigilant about their their health and hygiene and things like that. So I think this is this has really uh, taught us a lot of lessons. And and my personal belief is this is uh, Mother Nature has given us a chance to hit the re, the reset button. You know, you've worked on a lot of big events over the years. Is there anything that stood out for you? Um, uh, I, I I suppose the you know the, I keep referring to firefight. It was probably one of the you know, having a sort of 10-hour period of a whole heap of different bands coming on and singing three or four songs has been fantastic. Um, Adele is probably one of the highlights for me. Adele at ANZ Stadium, a couple of concerts in a row. And that was a week of sort of Ed Shearer and then Adele and Justin Bieber. And it was all about the same sort of two or three-week period. Um, they're pretty amazing events to, to be involved in. Um, from the, you know, from the, the writing of the menus, you know, to, you know, to getting it started and getting it prepped and so forth. And obviously we do the grand finals and state of origins and all those sorts of things. So they're always a really big, big world-class event. Um, but I, I still love the, the, you know, an event out in the middle of a paddock, you know, and uh, I spent some time with uh, brand events and IMG and, you know, like Gourmet Escape and those sorts of things, and I've worked on those, and they're great fun. Like, you know, those sorts of events, you know, incredible. Lots of people with passionate about food coming into an event. But, um, yeah, events events, uh, events will not be the same for a long time, I don't think. Well, the uh, NRL season, and you're going to have, well, a pretty much empty stadium to start with. But how are you going to feel when you're back cooking and the stadiums are packed again? Yeah, look, I think that'll be... Um, It'll be a, a joyous occasion. I mean, I actually, I'm I'm um, I'm at the hotel today, and and uh, my one of my colleagues is over at Bankwest getting ready to to feed. Uh, I think he'll feed a hundred people. <laughs> so, which is kind of kind of uh, kind of funny. We had a bit of a joke about it today, and and uh, so you know, two teams and referee, referees and match officials and. Um, um, you know the OB, the you know the TV guys, and and uh, we had a bit of a joke about it, and we've been joking for the last two or three weeks, sort of saying, oh, I can't wait to be back home. So we call it, you know, we call Bankwest Stadium home. So can't we can't wait to be back home doing doing the things the things that we do. Um, it's uh, it's going to be a good day. It's 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 seriously going to be a good day. I mean, it's today or tomorrow night is a step in the right direction with the stadium opening with no crowd. Um, there's you know some funny things going on in the background. Uh, you know there's a, a drone zooming around uh, Bankwest Stadium yesterday, practicing to uh, spray uh, sanitizer on seats. So they're doing a wow. they're doing a, a few tests to see if we can do that because we will need to do that after every event. So when we st- do start to get crowds in, um, those sorts of practices will come into play. So. Um, there is some footage floating around of that drone going around uh, Bankwest Stadium yesterday, spraying water, just you know, seeing how how viable it is and how well it works. So, yeah, things things will be different, but um, but we're excited. You know, we're excited that uh, the hardest thing for us is we opened a, a world class uh, thirty thousand seat stadium and got uh, got a really good year in, won a heap of awards, and then uh, and then closed the doors. So it's um, yeah, it'll be nice. It'd be nice to get back home. Mate, very much looking forward to uh, attending events on a larger scale as our society opens up again. Um, good luck with everything. Um, you've been an absolute legend with uh, what you've been doing through this pandemic for so many people. So, and we're really grateful that you spoke to us today. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. No, it's a really, it's a really, it's been a really good opportunity. Absolute learning, learning curve for me, and I think. Um I think the world uh, the world will be in a, in a better situation once we get through this, and I think um, you know when, when we do get our stadiums open and our restaurants and our bars and our and our cafes when we get all that uh, back up and running. I, I mean, I'm, I'm totally looking forward to a cold beer with some mates <laughs> at some stage. <laughs> Gee, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, Martin. Just keep in touch. Thanks for having me. Have a good one. Cheers. This is the Deep in the Weeds podcast. I'm Anthony Huckstep. 
Stay tuned as we share the stories of Australia's hospital community, suppliers and producers in search of hope during this pandemic. Special thanks to executive producer Rob Locke for making this all happen. Follow us on Instagram at Deep in the Weeds Podcast or email us at podcast at deepintheweeds.com.au. Stay safe and be well.